Page number 198 in your song books this morning. Page number 198 today. Page number 198 today. Thank you. Page number 198 in your song books today. On the night Christ was born, just before break of morn, as the stars in the sky were changed. Turn to number 292. This is the Bible stands like the rock undaunted. Number 292 this morning. Number 292. The Bible stands like a rock undaunted in the raging storms of time.
And that's the King James Version Bible. Amen. All right. Just in case you were wondering. All right. Number 282 is your turn there. Let's take care of some birthdays. And Jesus is coming again. Number 282. And we have some birthdays for this first week of December. And we have Edward Burks. He has a birthday today. And amen. Gideon Waltice has a birthday on the 4th. Elizabeth McCormick has a birthday on the 5th. We have George Landis on the 7th. And Barrett and Sailor Beller on the 7th. And on the 7th also we have Josh Helfridge. On the 8th, Dave Glidden. On the 8th, Levi Kime. And on the 8th, Nebraska Sparks. And these are the folks who has a birthday this week. So let's sing to these fine folks today, all right? Happy birthday to you. Jesus be true, God bless you and keep you the whole year through. Happy anniversary goes out to Shane and Juna Rice. Their anniversary is on the 8th of this month. Are they here this morning? I'm looking. All right, don't see anybody. All right, well, let's sing to them anyway, all right? Happy anniversary to you, to Jesus be true. God bless you and keep you the whole year through. Down here in your newsletter, send a card of encouragement to Brother Jason and Sister Desiree. And there's the address for them down there in, in uh, Douglas, Arizona. Encourage them if you possibly can uh, this week. The Lord brings it to your mind. All right. Number 282, Jesus is coming again. Marvelous message we bring. Number 282. Marvelous message we bring. Glorious carol we sing. Wonderful word of the King. Jesus is coming again. Coming again. prayer with someone nearby you today and then welcome folks to church. Glad that you're here today.
Hey, Brother Williams. Ithiel, the boy from Mexico, where are you at? Come on. We got to get you in, man. Get on up here. We got a lot going on today. We're going to cut into our fellowship time a little bit. I don't know where he's at. Do you even know where he's at? Yeah, all right. I'll tell you what, Brother Danny, come on. We'll have you do our Bible reading. I was going to have that first, but we'll have the Bible reading. Then we'll have it give his testimony, okay? You be come on up here and get on deck, okay, buddy? It's like ball. It's like a ball game. You got to get on deck. And uh, we want somebody else. All right, Brother Danny, what chapter we're reading? Ten. Ten. Ten of First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter ten this morning. Would you stand, please? When you find your place there, we'll read responsively through First Corinthians ten. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank that spiritual mouth and that part of Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples, the should not after evil things, Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. Neither be as some of them and Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of the serpents. No, all of these things happened unto them for in, in samples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. But will make with the temptation also make a way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no question for conscience' sake. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you, eat, asking no question for conscience' sake. Conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, Mr. Danny. Yes, sir. Uh, trying to get a couple of things done here. Giving Sunday.
uh, that we have. It's going to be on the 17th, which is two weeks from today. And again, if you're not familiar with that, what we do is what you would have given to the Lord that day. Uh, pray, get on, just get before the Lord, and you and your wife or family maybe, and ask God who that He would have you give the money that you would normally put in the church offering to personally. But we don't want you giving it to them, and they know it. We want you to give it honestly. Put it in an envelope, put it in cash in an envelope, and put their name on it. What the guys do, they just, they'll go around and give it to people. We want God to get the glory Amen. and want uh, to know that God cares about them. Now, a lot of people don't do cash. They'll bring cookies and all kinds of goodies and, and stuff. So we, we have a great time. We'll have Bible class that morning, and then at, right about this time here, we start having our giving service. And uh, I tell you, the Bible says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Uh, while I'm saying that, let me just carry a couple of issues right here. There's so many issues in the world today. But let me just say something about Christmas. I know that it came from Christ Mass. Okay, I, I know that. I didn't come in on the last load of pumpkins. And, uh, and I don't go for that. Either. But, you know, it's, it's part of the culture as far as that's what we use a word to express this time of year. Now, I want something in this year. When COVID hit... We were out two weeks and we came back. And I told people this. I said, if somebody's wearing a mask, I don't want you to bug them. I don't want you to look at them like you're a backslidden compromiser. I don't want that. If they're not wearing a mask and you're wearing a mask, I don't want you to look at them and say, you're spreading disease to everybody. I don't want that. You want to wear a mask? Fine. You don't want to wear a mask? Fine. I think we had one person in all the time being here wore a mask. Fine, man, right? You know, everybody's come in and breathed on each other. And we all got sick. Amen. But here's what I'm saying. Give people liberty. You know, Paul said, if, it, if, if meat offend my brother, I won't eat no meat, okay? You may say, well, I, 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 why ain't you got Santa Claus in here? Well, we're not having Santa Claus come, okay? Amen. All right, we're not having... I, I'm not against you enjoying yourself that way, but I'm not going to do that here. Yeah. Or you may, uh, you may think we're pagans even by having Giving Sunday. And if you want feel that way, I, I don't care. But let's just leave each other alone. Do as the Lord leads you and your family, okay, in, in celebration and stuff like that. You know, it's the same true about Easter deal. You want to hunt eggs, hunt eggs. You know, who wants a boiled egg that's been out there? In the, but anyway, <clears throat> just give other people. These are not, this is not some kind of, of a major doctrinal deal with me. It may be to you, it's not to me. What, here's where I laid in the church. You, you celebrate Christmas anyway. I'm going to celebrate the birth of Christ. Amen. I know that he probably wasn't born on December 25th. I know that. But he still came, amen. amen. God still gave him. And he's a gift to us. And so I'm going to celebrate that. And I don't have no sting in my conscience about that. And, and besides that, it's just good to give to people. It's what God says. So anyway, got all through that. Thank you. Uh, here's a, a letter from Sister Connie Dodge, your family. It says, Dear Church family, thank you so very much for all the prayers. God is so good, and He has been good to you folks. I'll tell you what, that's something else, the shape she was in. I love walking. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for the ones that came to visit and brought love from everyone. Thank you for the cards and gifts, and I'm still rereading those cards. Thank you for all the meals that were made for my family when I couldn't. And thank you all for the encouragement. God is not finished yet. Connie Dodge and family, and we love you. Appreciate you, and I mean that. It's been a joy to see God take you through that situation. Uh, as I said, Giving Sunday the 17th. Christmas uh, Eve is the 24th. We're going to have church. You've got family deals, things you got to Don't worry about it. But we will be, we will be open for business. <laughs> we're, no, we're, we're going to have church. I ain't, I ain't shutting down church on Christmas Eve. We're going to have Sunday morning, Sunday night. Uh, then uh, I want to thank everybody for giving to the widow's offering. That was a blessing. Uh, be in prayer about the Mansfield uh, visitation. We'll be doing that on a Wednesday night coming up. I'm not sure whether to get this done for the first year, but sometime. And then pray for Brother Jason Waltice. And then finally, pray for uh, Josiah Hutton. He had that surgery yesterday, but he's getting along pretty good. And uh, we appreciate that. So now, i got a young man going to come up here and give a testimony. I'm going to give you five minutes, okay? Is that, that fair enough? Come on up here. And I still haven't got his name down, but for, he's from Mexico. Right? Yes, sir. What, how do you pronounce your name? Come on over here. Bethiel. I-T-H-I-E-L. -I All right. Yes, sir. He's been around with the Davidson family, and I tell you, I like this guy. He's a blessing. I just wanted to give his testimony, you know, from somebody from another country. Amen. And aren't you glad God saves people outside of the United States? <laughs> <laughs> Me <you>? too. <laughs> Go right ahead. All right. You know, you have a great pastor here in this church. Um, I like I like Pastor Reg Kelly. Um, but I've come to say today... And these days when we're killing ourselves trying to live, 
People think they can find peace of mind in pills. They try to eat their way to ecstasy. They try to drink their way to pleasure. They try to smoke their way to settle nerves. They try to puff their way to popularity and bum their way to world power. They try to bully their way to friendships and on and on. This is what people do to try to get friendships, try to get to be someone in this world. But I've come to say, today where a poor man has a chance, where a sick man can get well, an ignorant man can become wise, a bad man can be made good, a good man can be made better, and even a dead man can be made alive, and that's through Jesus Christ. I was born in Mexico in the state of Tamaulipas, uh, Poblado Los Angeles, Municipio de Miguel Alemán, uh, to two very godly parents, and I'm very thankful and grateful to God for them. Um, it's just awesome. My dad's a pastor and a missionary and a dad and all sorts of stuff. He's amazing. And uh, he's had a very great influence in my life and he's the one that brought me to Christ. It was in August of 2015. Uh, he had just preached the sermon. He was going through the book of, of Romans and I was reading Romans and I just got convicted about who I was, that yeah, I had gone to church. I, I was raised Christian, but that doesn't mean that I'm a Christian. So. Um, uh, it was just conviction and knowing who I was, a uh, sinner, and that I needed to be saved, and only only through grace. And um, I talked to my dad about it, and he took me once again through the book of Romans, and I got saved that night. Um, and I've been different um, since I since that day. And um, my my parents are just amazing. They've they've guided me along the path. After that. Um, there, there have been trials. There have been uh, times when, it, when it's difficult as a Christian, uh, as probably all of you know. Um, but my parents have always been there. And uh, I've gone through a lot of stuff. And now I'm here with the Davidsons helping out with construction and just trying to learn all I can while I can um, and then serve, serve the Lord while I can. But I've come to realize that we live into the Lord and we die into the Lord. And I really um, like there in Matthew chapter um, 20, 28, verses 18, 28, 18 through 20, where it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and I am with you always, even into the end of the world. Amen. And I really pray to God that as I live, as I'm going, I'm going here, I'm go going there, I go back to Mexico next week, that I live this, that while, that while people are seeing me, that they might see Christ through me, um, that I might not live into myself, and that I might live out the Great Commission as, as I live. Um, that's, that's his word. That's his commandment to each one of us. Um, because also, I have seen that if I don't let the Lord be my Lord, or let Jesus Christ be the Lord of my life, it really doesn't work. Um, sometimes life gets pretty exciting, and I want to take the reins of it. And you know what, God? You've helped me to right here, and let me take it on from here. Because I think I've got it all figured out. i got my next year figured out. And um, I think it's going to go pretty good. So why don't I just take over? And then that's when the Lord really shows. Well, you think you can get through this. But you really need me to be Lord over your life. And being, being a safe person is, is amazing. It's never a boring journey. At least I haven't had a boring journey. Uh, it's always exciting to be walking with God. He'll take you up. He'll take you down. He's going to walk through you in the valley like Psalm 23 says. Through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm not going to fear. Why? Because he's with me. And if Jesus Christ is my Lord, and if you're here and you're not saved, I just wish you would get saved. But being not saved is too dangerous to risk. Even right now, the times we're living in, it's, it's way too dangerous to risk. So, I've heard Pastor right here mention already. And he just mentioned the plan of salvation. You know how if you're not saved this morning, I just beg with you to get saved. To get right with God if your heart is not right with him. And pastor, that's pretty much all I have. Thank you.
Brother Joel, Brother Joel, could you come to the piano? I hate to bother you really bad, but could you do that, please? And uh, I want to get to the song "Rejoice in the Lord" that Ron Hamilton wrote. If you don't take your Bibles this morning, to First Thessalonians, chapter five. First Thessalonians, chapter five. Uh, poor Joel, he's had to live with me so many years, and I meant to give you a heads up about this. What pages, uh, huh? 475. 475. Why don't you turn your Bibles to 475 and just hold that for a little bit? <laughs> That's not a Bible, is it? Hymn book, amen. First Thessalonians, though, chapter 5, in your Bible, First Thessalonians, chapter 5. Uh, is everybody there say Amen. That was awful weak. Some of you quit turning your Bibles. You're just waiting for it to come up on the board. And I know that's easy and nice, but I want you to turn there today. First Thessalonians. That was kind of funny because everybody's like, yeah, that's the truth. First Thessalonians chapter 5. God gives this list of things. I mean, they're real quick pointed, uh, brief things that, about doing. We've been preaching on you know, unruly and feeble-minded and weak and being patient toward all men. We preached a message on rendering evil for evil. Uh, about how to respond to evil in your life. And we're coming down now to verse number 16. And, and I hesitated and prayed and prayed. In fact, I thought I didn't think I was going to preach this till about an hour before church this morning. But I believe God's opened the way and broke through on me where I can preach this and be comfortable with it and believe that God's in it. But it says, verse number 16, I would have a m- m- scripture memorization right now. Everybody here is going to learn a verse of scripture. Rejoice evermore. Okay, is everybody going to say it again? Rejoice evermore. How many's learned a Bible verse? You just learned a Bible verse. I'll say it again. Rejoice evermore. All right, now we're going to get Reggie verse. And rejoice until something bad happens in your life. Rejoice until you can't pay the bills this month. Rejoice till the car broke down. Of course, these mechanics rejoice when the car breaks down because that means money in their pockets. See, if somebody's going to rejoice, I was kidding you. Uh, no, what does it say? What does it say? All right. We're going to say 475 today, and then we're going to preach this message. All right? Brother Joel, thank you for... Let's sing it out to the Lord. All right? This one, I want you to... I want you to uh, here's what I want you to do as we're singing. Ron Hamilton wrote this song. How many knows a little bit about Ron Hamilton? All right? Ron Hamilton, as a boy, got some kind of disease, right? If I remember right, in his eye... And he wound up being, lost the vision of one eye. And God used that in an amazing way in his life. And he wrote this song, Rejoice in the Lord. And it was birthed out of this passage of scripture and others like it. That irregardless of what's going on in our life, we can rejoice. Now I'm going to tell you something. This has been a battle for me. I went, can I be honest with you and tell you why I wasn't going to preach this? Because I felt like a hypocrite. And I've been struggling. And I said, Lord, how, you know, I believe every word of the Bible. It's not a matter of that. But Lord, my practical experience right now just is not, it's not matching what your Bible says here. Lord, I need help. And I'm just going to be honest with you. I've, I've gotten on my knees. And I said, God, I believe your word. But you've got to do something in my heart. You've got to do something in my mind, in my soul, my spirit. And by the way, it's only by the power of the Holy Spirit that you'll ever do this. Amen. And I just pray today that as we sing this, that you will think about now. This going to be, I'm going to tell you right now, you're free to come and pray. Right now, while we're singing. And if you're like me, your joy seemed like it got about that, that, that deep in the five-gallon bucket. You know what I would do if I was you? I'd come and say, God, my joy level has been very low. Nope, nobody's going to condemn you. You see, it's not a matter of being out here doing some kind, but life is rough. Life is tough. If you're not careful, you quit rejoicing. And so we're saying, and you come, just say, Lord, I need joy. I need you. Because I'll tell you, there's no place else to get it but from God Almighty. Here we go. God never knew without purpose or plan. When he tried, he served him.
no languages, man. I want everybody to look over on the wall, that verse. It says, Now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. That's one verse that this church was named off of. Liberty faith. It was came right out of that verse. And it is true that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And in every church, there needs to be liberty to approach the throne of grace and pray and seek the Lord, irregardless of what anybody thinks, and not be worried about what people think about me. If I if I weep, if I cry, if I if I say, Lord, I need you. This business of being bound up, I'm not talking about circus. I'm not talking about entertainment. I'm saying that life is rough and tough and God knows it and He has made our provision. And so I'm just, I'm not trying to will, will pull people out of the pulp. I'm just saying, I don't want Satan binding you. That's what I don't want. I don't want him telling you, no, I wouldn't do that. I'm telling you something. God honors humility. God, you need to, well, the freest day of your life is when you quit worrying about what everybody else thinks and just say, Lord, I need you. I'm coming to God. I'm coming to the throne of grace. So let's sing this last verse and now begin to preach. Now I can see destiny comes from above. God's strength is a children and virgins in love. My heart is blessed and I trust in His name. I'm going to ask you to come pray with this brother. I'm not going to start preaching today, but then nobody's in no hurry about anything, but just to love each other, care about each other. And uh, thank you, Brother Joel. I appreciate that. Let me preach this morning on the subject of rejoice evermore. I'll tell you the truth about life. Apart from believing God and trusting God, I just say that's an impossibility to rejoice evermore. And, uh, you know, as I look in the Bible, I find out that men of the Bible, especially go back to the Old Testament especially, life did not get easier for them as they got older. Life got tougher for them as they got older. You check it out. You check the men of the Bible. When they got old, when the real test it came into play. I know that may not sound encouraging to some of you, but I'm telling you something. But God has a purpose in it. You say, Reggie, what is joy? Joy is a fruit of the Holy Ghost. The world has its substitute of happiness, but joy is a fruit of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is God Almighty. And you cannot get joy, biblical joy, from any other place in this world than through the joy of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is God, and the source of true joy in God is, is the Holy Spirit of God giving us joy. Now, what is rejoicing? What does it mean to rejoice? Well, rejoicing is a manifestation of the joy that's in us. So in other words, if I have joy in me, rejoicing is the manifestation of that joy coming out of the inner man and in a, in a, in manifesting itself in a way that can be seen usually. Now, a person can be very quiet and yet rejoicing internally. I understand that. And by the way, you need to learn how to do that. Just rejoice in the Lord, irregardless of what's going around you. But it could be as not only the inner man, but it may be expressed outwardly by a person's countenance. You know something, countenance is so important. But if a person is rejoicing in the Lord, their countenance will be, it'll be a blessing. And I'll tell you, countenance tells a lot about what's going on. And I know we're not always up on the mountain and all that, we're down the valley. But rejoicing in the Lord, this verse gives no conditions. It just says rejoice evermore. And uh, our body language can, can express rejoicing in the Lord. And uh, s several things. But I'm not talking today and preaching about a flesh propped up deal. I'm talking about genuine joy that I saw in Brother Marvin Lakey when he lost his grandson. The Apostle Paul said, sorrowing, yet always rejoicing. And I want to tell you something we need to get a hold of as Christian people, that even though we may be going through grief and sorrow, 
God has given us the ability to rejoice in Him. And we have to read the Bible to see that, but even in the midst of that. But I saw him and I saw, I, I have, you know, I, I just, you know, I've watched Lane and I've watched your family. I, I, this week I thought about it. I thought, what if I'd lost a 16 year old son? Yeah. Just suddenly, just turned 16, boom, out of here. I mean, I'd have a tendency to say, Lord, what's all life all about? Why'd you give him to us anyway? If this is what's going to do, you know, but I've watched them rejoice. Oh, does that mean they're giddy all the time? No, but I've watched a constant, steady rejoicing in the Lord. And there's a reason that they can do that. But that takes the power of the Holy Ghost inside you to do that. You can't prop that up at church. You can't make it up. It won't last till you get outside the door. I'm talking about a work of God Almighty and the work of the Holy Spirit that works from the inside and will change you. And people will see where you would, you would be hopeless and give up and quit. They just got the joy of the Lord that takes them on the next day and the next day and the next day. As I said, I'm not talking about flesh propped up. But the joy of the Lord that enables us to rejoice through the trials and troubles and sorrows and disappointments and the griefs of this life. It says rejoice evermore. But you say, God, I've lost a loved one. I've lost a spouse. I've lost a child. I've lost a parent. Or you say, Lord, it says rejoice. But God, I've been betrayed and my trust has been broken. You say, God says rejoice. And you say, but God, I've been forsaken by my friends. I've lost my job. There's more bills than there is income. God says rejoice in the Lord. But Lord, my health is deteriorating. My health is gone. God says rejoice evermore. But Biden got elected. <laughs> I'll tell you something. I, that, that, that election, I, 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 the last thing I had was joy. Amen. Bible talks about though that we grieve when wicked rulers are in. That's what the Bible talks about. Uh, Lord, I want to rejoice, but this government's gone crazy. They're giving millions, zillions to Ukraine, and they won't and they won't close the border. And, I, and we got all kinds of problems here, and they won't do anything about crime. And, and Lord, we're a mess. How can I be rejoicing in the midst of a country that's going to hell like this one is? Lord says, rejoice evermore. You've been lied on and defiled and maligned and demonized. Maybe you've been injured, you're not able to work and provide for your family. God says rejoice evermore, but your children are astray and they've walked away from their raising. God says rejoice evermore and look around us and all the perversion and the sin and the wickedness and America falling and under judgment. And God still says rejoice evermore. You, my, you and I have failed maybe spiritually, we've messed up, we've sinned. And by the way, yes, sin will take joy out of you. But God still says, rejoice evermore. I want to read you a poem that L.T. Hopper gave and his wife Cora gave me when I graduated. And I know this is not super spiritual, but there's some spiritual truth in it that has helped me through the years. It says, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you. But make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired of waiting. Or be lied about and yet not deal in lies. Or be hated and don't give away yourself to hating. And yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master. If you can think and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster. And treat those two imposters just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things that you've given your life to, broken, and then stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose in what you risked and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and send you to serve your turn long after they're gone. And so hold on when there's nothing in you except the will. And he put capital W, a reference to God, which says to you, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings and not lose the common touch. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you. And if all men count with you, but none too much. And if you can feel the unforgiving minute. With 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, you will be a man, my son.
The biblical principles within that is that no matter what's happening in your life, keep your head up, keep your joy, keep being optimistic, keep trusting the sovereign God in your life. Our children value what they perceive us to have joy in. I'll say that again. Our children value what their parents, what they perceive in their parents rejoice in. If they see you rejoicing in catching a fish much more than you ever rejoice at church. If they see you rejoicing at a ball game or even over killing a ten point buck. More than they've ever seen you rejoice over your soul being saved. Someone is saved at church, delivered from hell, and you don't even get a smile out of them about that. They they begin to get a value system of this world by what you enjoy. I could go on with that a long time, but I'm not. God never said that you wouldn't have sorrow and sadness, but that you can rejoice in it and rejoice through it. Guys, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, chapter 6 and verse number 10, if you'll put it up there. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 10. Paul said, as sorrowing, as sorrowful, yet always what? Rejoicing. What is he telling you here? You can have joy in the midst of sorrow. This is a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit within us. Paul didn't say, I'm just going around getting and putting on a big flesh show like everything's fine when it's not. He said, I have sorrow, but I can still rejoice through that sorrow. Go to Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2. Kind of move on. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which does so easily be set us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Watch this. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Watch this. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand throne of God. While Jesus was on the cross, while Jesus was being spit upon, while Jesus was being pierced, while Jesus was being beaten, the Bible said that he had joy in the midst of all that, that was against him and all that was being done to him. There is a supernatural power. I want it. I don't know about you. I want a supernatural power that gives a man joy when everything in life has been turned upside down. When everything seemed to be going exactly up to what you thought it would do. When the devil tells you it ain't worth it, you ought to quit. You ought to go home. When Satan's lying to you, I want the supernatural power of Almighty God to put joy in my heart to see beyond the, tr the cross, to see beyond the trial, to see beyond the trouble and that his joy will be in my soul so I can reflect God like he is. Amen. Who for the joy set before him endured the cross. Acts chapter 16, the apostle Paul, they were, got, they were arrested for preaching the gospel. They put him in stocks and laid many stripes upon them. And about midnight, the Bible said, Paul looked at Silas and said, if it was your, it's your fault we're here. <laughs> and they begin to get mad at each other, right? No. They begin to blame each other, right? No. What did they do at midnight? They prayed and sang praise unto God. What was he doing? He was rejoicing. You think that made his back quit hurting? Do you think that closed up the wounds? Do you think that took the pressure off of his joints, beans and stocks and bonds? But in the midst of that, he was able to sing and praise and rejoice in the God Almighty. I am telling you something. God's going to bring this nation to this level of spirituality. We've been a spoiled people. Everything goes right. We got a remedy for everything. We don't need God for anything. God will bring us to where he's all we got because he's really all we need. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you something. I want a Christianity, Brother Bill, that'll take me through the trials, that'll hold me through the testing, that'll take, keep me through the disappointments, that'll take the sorrow and the, and the grief and the groaning and the moaning and the complaining out of my soul and give it to God and move on down through life, amen, with a rejoicing spirit. Hey, do you realize that if this church would get a hold of this, if this preacher would get a hold of this, there might be some people out there that would want what we've got. Go to Philippians chapter 4, verse number 4. Philippians 4, verse number 4. Well, anyway, you see that. What did Paul say? Rejoice in the Lord when you feel like it. And again, I say, you know why I believe he said again? Because you read the first time, he's like, nah. I really mean it, he's saying. Rejoice in the Lord. Does anybody know where Paul was at when he wrote that? He was in prison. Well, I mean, with human waist up to his ankles and rats as big as cats. 
Maybe down in that place where there was a hole that they dropped you into. With no light. Filth. Nastiness. Waking up being bitten by rats at night. And yet that man said, rejoice. He wrote to that church in conditions like that. And I'm sitting there whining. Truth be known, America is a sissy nation now. We're a bunch of spoiled wimps. Our ancestors were tough. They were tough. They came over, but they trusted God. And they came over and didn't want a government to have everything in front of them. They came across this country and they lived here. They just wanted to be free to worship God. They didn't have to have everything. Buried their babies beside the trail for the cows to dig up and eat after they were five miles down the road. I'm telling you something to listen. I, I believe in toughness. I believe I'll be straightened up, quit being a wimp. Amen. And I believe Christian people ought to quit being so wimpy. And to quit feeling so sorry for ourselves. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. I hope you are too. First Peter chapter one, guys, just go ahead of me there. First Peter chapter one. And let's look at verse number six. Wherein you greatly rejoice. Not just kinda, but greatly rejoice. How now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness? Are you telling me that I can have rejoicing and be heavy in my heart? Yes, we can. Uh, how many here today would you just say, look, there is some heaviness in my heart, Reg Young, ain't going to lie. I've got both hands up. My heart is heavy. My heart is heavy. My heart is heavy. But in the midst of that heaviness, God tells me to rejoice. There's a reason I can. Because God is going to work all things together for good to them that love the Lord, who are the called according to His purpose. My problem is His faith is believing God against all odds. My problem is getting my eyes off of what I see and seeing the invisible. That's the truth. Look at verse number 7. The trial of your faith be much more precious than that of gold that perishes, though it be tried by fire, might be found in the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. God is saying, I'm telling you something. You're going to have trials. You're going to have trouble. Your thing going to hit you. But you can rejoice in the midst of that. You're not without hope. Go to chapter 4 and verse number 13. But he said, Beloved, not thinking not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is trying, as though some strange thing happened to you. But what? Mope. Gripe. What's it say? Rejoice. Hey, I'll tell you something I'm doing. I'm heading down the trail. Y'all can come along if y'all to, but if you don't come along, I'm going anyway. I want God to do a work in my heart that though I'm heavy, though I'm tried, though I'm tempted, though I'm disappointed, I can still rejoice in Almighty God and not blaspheme my God by murmuring and griping and complaining and having a stupid star spirit about everything. Amen. Well, verse number, right, we got that. Did we get 413? No, Romans 12. Thank you, guys. Hey, look at what he said. Rejoice that with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. You see, there's both sides. Weeping doesn't mean that you still can't have joy. Yeah. We need to get that down. Yeah. Then look what it says in 1 Corinthians 13. The Bible said, Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Amen. In the book of Psalms, you don't need to put it down, but over 50 sometimes. That David talks about rejoicing in the book of Psalms, over, over, I believe 55 times, not counting all the times that he mentions joy. Do you know one reason I believe that God was able to say in the New Testament about David being a man after his own heart was not because of all his sin, but because David could still rejoice when his son had killed a brother, when his son had raped a daughter, and he, he knew God was chastising him, but he still loved God anyway. He rejoiced through his own failures, knowing that God was bigger than his life. I'm telling you, there's a reason. It wasn't because David was such a good man. He wasn't. But David kept rejoicing. David kept rejoicing. He wasn't covering it over and like it wasn't nothing. He was just saying, listen, beyond all my sin, beyond all my mistakes, beyond all my stupidity, God still loves me. And Jesus died in blood for me. I'm still going to rejoice in the ultimate purposes of Almighty God. Look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice! And be exceeding glad. For great is your reward where? In heaven. On the other side. Amen. 
Go to John chapter 16. Boy, here's a verse above me. But ye now therefore have sorrow. But I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice. And in your joy, no man take this from you. Woo! Amen. Now, I'm just going to tell you something. I, I, I don't know, but it looks to me like I let that happen. I've been in church before. And some brother robbed me of my joy before I ever got in the pulpit. But God says his joy is that no man takes from me. I don't know about this. I'm preaching water deep in my head. But what I do know is there's a supernatural power of the Holy Ghost that can give me joy in the midst of all the junk that may come at you in life. Look, look, at, John, look at verse number 33 in that same chapter. Verse number 33. Jesus talking about that. These things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world, what? Tribulation. Be, be what? Amen. Amen. Be of good cheer. Why? He's overcome the world. we got to see beyond the circumstances. We have to see beyond the sorrow. We have to see beyond the death. We have to see beyond the disappointment. We have to see beyond the bills that can't be paid. We have to see beyond the sickness. we got to look forward and say, well, I'm going to make it through this whole world and God is on the other side of this thing. And I can rejoice because it ain't going to always be this way. You say, well, you live in a Lulu land. No, I ain't. I'm living in Bible land. Yeah. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Did you know what God wants to do? The devil wants to do every week of your life. The devil wants to come along and say, Ah, sister, I think things are bad now. And don't you be so happy about nothing. And you know you're getting old. What's going to happen to you when you get old? I, I'm sorry. I just said that, didn't I? You don't feel old, probably. He's going to come along every week and try to steal your joy from you. Every week. Every week. Uh, Mary, did you know what Mary said about you? No. You don't want to know either, right? No. Every week of your life, Satan's going to come and just try to rob you of your joy. He's going to try to tell you this and tell you that. And he's going to come on and say, you're sorry, Brett. You're worthless. Hold down. You know what I tell him? The Bible says, agree with my adversary quickly. I say, devil, you're right. I should have been in hell, but you ain't taking me there because of Jesus. What he does. And you're not going to rob me of my joy. Amen. Don't let people rob you of your joy. Satan wants to rob you of your joy because your joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah, man. Why do you think they drop propaganda mail over countries that they're going to war to? Give up. There's no hope. Take your joy out. Satan's all time flying over you, dropping his propaganda lies over you. You ain't going to you know, you make it. You just ain't going to make it. Well, there's another baby. And you just ain't going to make it. Don't you know that? You ought to go into <laughs> She's got joy. Amen. She's like, here yeah. I'm telling you something right now. I'm talking about real battle. I didn't come to church to play games with you. I don't do that. I'm telling you right now, Satan wants to rob you of your joy. Do you know what he'd like to do with me, brother? He'd like for me to get so down, so out, that I walk behind the pulpit and everybody goes, Boy, what's the matter, Reggie? Boy, he looks down today. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's exactly what he wants you to walk through the door and the guy shake your hand. You're going, Boy, he got problems. Huh? You say, Reggie, I don't feel good. I'm not talking about hide it all the time. I'm just saying give it to God. Amen. Be real about it. Yes. There are days when I'm down and when I'm out and so forth like that. And I'll tell you, I felt like a hypocrite preaching this, Brother Randy. You know why I felt like a hypocrite? Because I don't have the joy I ought to have. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you, I like church. I love church. Amen. But I'll be honest with you, I will testify to you this morning that my wife living at home, I sometimes my joy is so low that I can tell it affects Karen even. I tell you something, daddy's better straighten up. We better quit being a bunch of wimps. Yes, life is hard. Yes, life is tough. But I'm going to tell you something. If you're not careful, your lack of joy will spread into your family. Yes. Yes. Amen. He said, Reggie, why are you rejoicing today for? Why should we rejoice evermore? Number one, God loves me. 
Hey man, God loves me. I am so glad that my Father in heaven tells of His love in the book He has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Amen, amen. I tell you what, I'm going to keep on talking. Somebody want to sing that, you go right ahead, amen. But I'll tell you something when I can rejoice because He really does love me. He gave His Son for me. He loves me. Amen. I can rejoice in that if, if everything else goes south Amen. or north. I don't know why we say go south. For. I think I say go north. <laughs> if everything goes north on you. Amen. But then I'm going to rejoice because I have a sacrifice. I've got the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world as my Savior. I'm going to rejoice because I have a substitute. i got one who died in my place for my sin and paid for my sin in the full. Amen. Amen. Some of you, some of you, some of you Presbyterians ought to shout amen. You ought to rejoice. Amen. I'm going to tell you something because you have a substitute. You have a sacrifice that paid for your sins in full. I mean, it's been stamped paid. Amen. I tell you what I remember. We paid off our old farm. I tell you what, I went down the I went down the sidewalk, brother Brett, and I had that uh, that title abstract and had a paid note. Man, I, I was just walking on air, amen. You know what? It's paid, amen. amen. I'll tell you how to walk on air because Jesus Christ paid your sin that, amen. Don't you let the devil drag that up you. I'm going to rejoice because I have a redeemer, amen. I'm going to rejoice because somebody paid with his blood for all my sins paid in full. I'm going to rejoice because I'm reconciled to God through the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm going to, rec- I'm going to re- rejoice evermore because I'm forgiven by his mercy and by his grace. I'm going to rejoice because I'm saved to the uttermost. I'm going to rejoice because I'm saved from the wrath of God. I'm going to rejoice because I'm justified by His blood. I'm going to rejoice because I'm sanctified in Christ. I'm going to rejoice because of His grace. I'm going to rejoice because of His mercy. It's new every morning. Amen. I tell you what, why shouldn't we rejoice? Got all this going for us. Amen. I'm going to rejoice because I'm a son of God and a child of God by faith. I've been born again by the Spirit of God. I'm telling you something. I have eternal life and I'm going to rejoice about it. I ain't going to sit in church and sour-headed and sour-mouthed and sour faith. I'm going to rejoice, amen, because of what Jesus did for me. I'm going to rejoice in the church, amen. Well, you said, I got hurt at the church. Yeah, welcome to church, amen. Who told you that there's a bunch of nice people? They're a bunch of wicked sinners sought by the grace of God. And they still have their own flesh nature. And they're the meanest people in the county. <laughs> Amen. Quit thinking everybody else treats you nice. And your joy is based on how people treat you nice. I'll sick Don's in on you if you ain't careful. He'll take the joy out of you. <laughs> John, I'm lying on you. That's pitiful. You know what? I can rejoice if I have a friendship with a brother there. Amen. Amen. If he got up and said, you're the sorriest preacher in three states, I'd just Amen. laugh. Amen. See? i just laugh and go, That's, I'm just telling you something. I'm thankful for church. Amen. I'm thankful for church. I'll tell you something right now. I pray God Almighty, and I don't want to mouth something that I can't live up to, but I know this, by the grace of God, He can keep you parked. He can keep you coming. He can keep you in line. I'm going to tell you something that scares me. I what I'd have missed. The joy I'd have missed if God hadn't kept me in church. Amen. I'll tell you what, Brother Carr. I like church because God convicts me. I like church because the brethren fellowship. I like to hear them sing. Amen. Oh, some of you don't know I'm a secret Pentecostal. <laughs> them kids get up here to sing and I'll tell you what. I get to one to jump up and sing with them and that ruined the whole thing. But I get happy about it. Amen. I am happy about our fellowship in Jesus Christ. I'm glad to have a church to go to that preaches the old King James Bible. I'm glad to go to a church where Jesus Christ is lifted up as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. I'm glad to have fellowship with the people of God. I'm not, I'll tell you something. I've got too much to be happy for, Randy. I've got too much to rejoice in. Now, I know. All right, everybody. Devil sitting out there on somebody's truck. <laughs> it's a little bitty car. That's yours. No devil sitting out there on, on the. He said, "Yeah, you preach this. Wait till I put something on you this week, buddy. I'll take the rejoicing out of you." So y'all pray for me, amen. Because every time you preach on something, you fix to get something, amen. 
But I'm thankful for fellowship. I'm thankful that God led us out of the public school system. Amen. I'll never, I will never blame God. I'll never gripe at God for leading us out of Egypt. Amen. I'm so glad God led us out of that old Egyptian world. I'm glad God took me through the wilderness. Amen. I'm glad God took country western out of me. Tammy Wynette and Dolly Doolittle and whoever all their names are. I'm glad I got rid of that country western music. I'm glad he led me out of rock and roll. John Lennon saying, we're more popular than Jesus Christ. I'll tell you, God showed him. He walking up some steps here and the guy saw, said, hey. And he turned around, boom, blowed him into hell. Before he had a chance to say, I'm sorry, God, please forgive me for my blasphemy. He was in hell that fast. I'm telling you something, I rejoice that I had some parents that cared about me. I'm telling you something, I'm I'm going to rejoice in the cross of my Lord Jesus. Paul said in Galatians 6, he said, God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross. Jesus, I'm thankful for his blood, amen. I'm going to rejoice in the blood of my Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you like Sunday school class this morning, I'm going to rejoice in my eternal life in Jesus Christ. I'm so glad, amen, that I ain't had to get saved 62 times. I'm glad glad I've never lost my salvation because I didn't live up to God's laws and God's commandments. I'm glad for grace, amen. I'm going to rejoice and I have eternal life through Jesus Christ. I'll tell you something I'm going to rejoice in. That's the resurrection, amen. One of these days we're coming up out of the ground, almighty God, with a new glorified body. And I'm going to rejoice because someday I ain't going to have to wear glasses. And someday I'll hear Karen what she said. And so... (laughs) And, and someday my disc and my back won't bulge no more. And someday I'll have a new glorified body fashioned like in Jesus. And I ought to rejoice about that now. Amen. I'll tell you something. I'm going to rejoice because I'm going to be with Him forever. I'm going to rejoice because my name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm going to rejoice because the rapture of the church. I'm going to rejoice because Jesus is returning in great power and glory. I'm so glad. I'm so glad He's coming back. I'm going to do like they did in Revelation chapter 9 saying glory to God. And Praise the Lamb forever. Oh, He's come to destroy His enemies. Amen. I'm going to be glad when He went to tread the wine press of the wrath of Almighty God. And when He wipes this wicked God hating world off the map. Amen. I'm going to be rejoicing the fact that someday I'll rule and reign with Him in a, a, in a millennial reign. I am going to rejoice, Brother Bill, that I'll have a new glorified body. I'll be with my Lord. I'll be in forever with Christ. Amen. I'm going to rejoice that He's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yeah, man. I tell you what, you only have something to rejoice about. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 10, it says the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire where the fire and brimstone had forever. Amen. I tell you something, I'm going to rejoice because he's going to throw the devil in hell. He's going to throw the devil in the lake of fire and he'll never aggravate me again. I'm going to rejoice because I'm going to a new heaven and new earth. Wherein dwells righteousness. Amen. I tell you, the curse is all gone. I tell you one thing. I believe the watermelons will be ripe when I get next to them and the oranges will be that big and there'll be juice coming out of them. Amen. And I'll cut an apple and there won't be no worms in the apple. Amen. And I'll walk through the woods and there won't be no ticks. Amen. And there won't be any vipers and serpents that will bite you. I'm going to tell you something. I can enjoy the glory of God and His creation. Amen. I'm going to tell you something right now. The best is yet to come. And I'm going to rejoice in these things this morning. I'll tell you something else I'm going to rejoice in. I'm going to rejoice that God gave me a Bible. Woo! I'm going to rejoice I've got the truth. Amen. I don't have to sit and listen to Joseph Smith tell me what he saw looking down into his hat looking at a couple of stones. I don't tell you. I'm glad I'm not following Betty Airy and some other woman preacher that shouldn't be preaching to start with. I'll tell you something, I've got a Bible, amen. Tells me how to live in every issue of my life. I'm glad God gave me it's a lamp through my feet and a light through my path. I'm glad I'm going to rejoice in the fact that it is forever settled in heaven. I'm going to rejoice in the fact that it's preserved word of God, amen. I'll tell you, I'd hate to be one of these cracky preachers going around here, one Bible here and one Bible there. He used the Bible he thinks they want to hear. I would tell you something, I'm rejoicing that I have the final authority of Almighty God. He preserved His Word. Amen. You say, I don't believe that. That's why you ain't got no joy. Amen. The Bible said that you'll have joy in believing. I'll tell you something else. I'm going to rejoice in judgment. I'm going to rejoice in judgment. I'm glad there's a righteous, holy God who's going to set everything right. 
Go bring out every stinking lie. Bring out every twist in this, that, and the other. And the truth's going to come out. I'll tell you what, it just makes me want to jump for joy. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to rejoice because of the church and the love and the fellowship of the brethren. And I'm going to rejoice because God called me to preach. I tell you, I'm glad God saved me and I'm glad he called me to preach. You say, you you kidding about that? No, I ain't kidding about that. I'm glad God called me to serve him. I I tell you, I am just rejoicing for the eternal purpose and the value in life that he's given me. I tell you, I've milked cows and I quit that. I sold oxes for 47 years and quit that. And I'm doing logs now and I'll quit that. But I ain't quitting preaching, amen. Amen. I hope, I I hope I can die sitting in the saddle with my feet in the stirrups, amen. I don't tell you something, ain't nothing like serving God Almighty. And whatever he's given you to do, you do it with all your might, amen. I don't tell you something, I've got a God that's worth serving, amen. A God worth worshiping, amen. I'm going to tell you something, don't you just love to look at adults that never have any joy? Miserable wimps. Snowflakes. Offended about everything so they can stay sour 24 hours a day. Don't you just love, see, you know, this week come out, big report, honest to goodness, that conservative families' children are much happier than liberal children's families. It's in the national news. I said, I could have told you that. You don't need to take a survey. Man, I'm going to tell you, if I was a liberal, I'd be, number one, don't believe in God hardly. That's the truth. They have no hope. They're mad at everybody. Marching in the streets. Burning buildings down. No wonder they're not happy. Soaking in the beer. Hey, man. I'll tell you something. I'm, I'm rejoicing. I'm rejoicing in the Lord. I mean, don't you just love to see these young people who are sour-faced and sold up like a possum? I see them come to church, you know, and they walk, they walk in here. We're singing. I want to tell you what you need. You need to be saved. You need to be saved. I, I, I can understand having a week or two where you've had it rough. But Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, you come in here like a sourpuss. I mean, you look like a possum eating green, green uh, what do you call them things on the persimmons. Week after week, you got a roof over your head. Food to eat. Parents that brought you to church. Yeah. Parents that's providing for you. And a God in heaven that loves you and gave his son for you. And you sitting there like this week after week. You make me sick. Yeah. And you need to get saved. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. That's exactly the truth. I don't tell you how you can. There, you see, you can, you can test yourself. You don't even need somebody. You don't need a preacher. Test yourself. What turns you on? What gives you joy? Oh, I believe that's an eight-pounder. Oh, we're going to ride somewhere. Oh, your kids see you all happy, happy, happy. You walk into church and you sit there like, you know, we're, 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 we're very under control people. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Your kid goes down to basketball games and you come up off the, oh, my land. Come on, get him, get him, get him. Yeah, yeah you come up off your seats. Where your joy is tells you about yourself. You don't nobody need to tell you nothing. Where's your joy? Mmm, boy, like that check. Woo, let's take well for supper, honey. You're happy as a lark when the money's coming in. They're, I'm telling you something. We got ourselves backward in this nation. You got a home, got a roof, got food, live in America. Got clothes to wear, opportunity, got Bible, parents, siblings, yet no joy. I'll tell you right now, there are kids in this world that are living in thatched huts who've got more joy than you got this morning. Yes, they're living in cardboard boxes. And getting a ride on the jeepney to church and singing their hearts out and there's joy on their face. The Old Testament children of Israel. Oh, they leave out, they got this Passover in, in, in Exodus 12. By Exodus 13, would the God we would have left, we wouldn't have left Egypt through it, leeks and onions down there. And you let us out in the stupid wilderness. And you said it's going to be a land of milk and honey. And you, 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 you. 15 to 20 times. God said they murmured. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't do nothing to make that bunch happy. Yep. Yeah. That's right. 
You want to do your kids a favor? Set them down and say, listen, I love you. You got a home. You got clothes. You got food. You got warmth in winter. You got air, air conditioning in <laughs> summer. And uh, got all, you got this, you got that. Lord loves you. I, this, I'm telling you something. Parents ought not put up with this sullen up, sour headed stuff in their children. Did you know my daddy could take that sour look off your face so fast and make your head swing? Hey, Amen. Amen. We ain't having no sold up stuff around here. We're going to be rejoicing. We're going to be happy. Amen. Amen. Sold up like a possum. They murmured. They griped about everything. Wanted to go back to Egypt. I've watched people start coming to church, make a profession of faith. But when it comes time to leave Egypt, they have... No joy, enthusiasm, except sin and worldliness. You're not happy unless you're at a rodeo, at a car race, at a fishing tournament. <laughs> That's the only time you rejoice about anything. Your heart is hard, depraved. God's been so good to you, but you can't rejoice in the Lord. I want to tell you something. What happened this morning is get up out of your bench, come up here and ask God, say, Lord, forgive me for not having joy in my soul. I got too much to be happy about, too much to rejoice about. I'm sitting listening to the devil too much, and I'll tell you what, it's spreading itself to everybody around me. God's been so good to us. As I said, we ought to get up and get on this morning bench and say, God, forgive me and have mercy upon me for being a sold up, soaked up, sour Christian. Yes. I'll tell you, Jovis was down there, sold by his brothers, coming in there to Egypt. And I'll tell you what, they, what's her name? That old, that old sow lied on him and got him in prison. Got down there in prison. He, the Bible tells you he just had a good attitude. And, a good, and they asked him, what are you so happy about? Come on. Everything in his life had been wrong. He had God. He had God. And that, that relationship with God raised him above the circumstances of his life. To where when he's in prison, people are saying, what do you got to smile about? Amen. I want to tell you something. You know, when David said, rejoice, Lord, and all that kind of stuff, a lot of it was after all the trouble he had in his life. Daniel was there. Hannah, she rejoiced in the Lord. The Bible said, weep, he may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm going to ask the choir to come right now, if you will. Brother David, I want you to bring the choir up here and the pianist. They're going to sing a song that, I'm telling you what, while they're coming, I want you to listen to me. You and I are going to have spiritual warfare over joy and rejoicing. You can expect it. I want this morning some people in this church to make up our minds. I'm talking with you of not leaving in Satan's mud hole. You're sitting here this morning, listening this morning. You're bound in sorrow and grief and confusion. And in faith, I want you to say, God, raise me up out of this mud hole. Let me tell you a principle of Scripture. Obey first, understand later. Now, they're going to sing, come on up here. Get right somewhere in here. Maybe you can get right there if they can see you. Now, I'm going to tell you a story about what happened here at church. I love these kids. There's no way to tell you what they've done for me. And they would sing this song. Joe, sister, go ahead and just take off a little bit. I think you'll recognize it. And I want you kids to know something. That uh, God used you in your pastor's life. They would sing, oh, be glad and rejoice. And I'd be sitting there and I'd, I'd enjoy the song. It's like, Lord. And this week... I don't know, I can't explain this to you. It's like God put a tape player in my brain. And all I could hear was these kids singing. Oh, rejoice and be glad. 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 I was like, Lord, Lord, what's going on? Is it Reggie? You're letting your trials, you're letting your troubles weight you down. You need a fresh bucket of joy from heaven. I want you to go ahead and sing. Get started on that. But you're sitting here this morning. You're bound in grief and sorrow. Maybe going through some of what I went through. I want you to break out today. And I want you to say to yourself, I am not letting Satan keep me from rejoicing every Lord. You come this morning. Let's stand together. The table is set and the feast almost ready. The lunch and waiting prepared by the great Lord. Come and sit here and participate.
I want you to hold here. I, I'm, a, I, I'm as serious as a heart attack with you. God, preach this to me. Now I'm telling you the truth. I was like, Lord, I can't get up and preach that. I went everywhere in the Bible trying to find a message I could preach this morning. Because I said, Lord, I'll be a hypocrite. And I have been, but I'll tell you, I'm, I'm asking God, and that's all I'm asking you to do, is say, Lord, I refuse to live in the devil's mud hole. God, I'm going to come this morning, I'm going to ask you for joy. To give me a rejoicing heart. You know what we need? We don't need more pills. We don't need no more brands. We don't need more brands and shows. We need the rejoicing heart that God gives. And I just want to encourage all of you. I want you to know I love you. I want the very best for you. But I know this much, that rejoicing is part of God's economy in Christian faith. And we must not let it get away from us, no matter what happens. Now, we're different personality. I know that I'm a little more wound up than a lot of people. But I'm going to tell you something. That's not You say, I'm just a quiet type person. But you can still have that rejoicing heart. Amen. And so well, I'm just going to say, if, if I, I know, I say, Lord, come and ask God, give me a rejoicing heart. Though the trials are tough, though the burdens are heavy, God, give me a rejoicing heart. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Sing this next verse and we go home. tell you kids that are here all of you here just a second I want to tell you as a pastor how much I appreciate you I, I would encourage every young person out here I tell you what, what what God has done in the life and the face and the heart of these ki the kids is unreal. I sit back and watch and I'm like Lord are these kids real this has been something the Holy Spirit has done and the, the joy that I see in their faces and they're, they're happier when they're practicing than when they're singing but I want to say something. I'm going to be sick. These boys back here. Yeah. I tell you what. You cannot imagine the joy it gives me to see boys back here singing their heart out for God. Amen. They don't care what you think. Amen. They're not trying to be cool for you. Amen. Come on. That man. Amen. Now I want you boys to know I appreciate. I appreciate all of you. But Amen. listen, uh, pray for us. Pray for each other that we'll have the joy of the Lord as our strength. That we rejoice in our trials and our sufferings and sorrows, whatever it is. Now, one last word before we go. Sister Shiana, is that the way you say it?
her sister and her husband, their house burned down the other night. Okay? Yeah. Lost everything. The church is giving uh, her some money today. Have you got with her already, Karen? Okay. To go buy the kids some clothes. Man. And then we're going to try to do some more for them. But they lost everything, didn't they? They didn't get anything out of the house. And so we're going to try to help them. Pray for them. You might, it, and by the way, if you're interested in help, you might talk to her and say, what could I do to be a help to these people? I want to tell you something, folks. You lose your home to a fire and lose everything in it. It's a bad deal. Bad deal. Yep. Help to them in the, in the name of the Lord. All right. Uh, how many say, Brother Reggie, I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm going to see if I can't get about three ounces of joy back in my heart and serve the Lord. All right. I love you in the Lord. I'll tell you what, I don't believe in coming to church just sour. I ain't trying to fill 30 minutes and you go home. And yeah. I'm telling you, I want God at, at work in our lives. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I'll probably stumble into heaven as a fa complete failure. But I'll tell you what, <laughs> I'm going to try to have some joy in my heart. Amen. I love you all. If you'll kiss your wife, hug your kids, you can go home. Well, watch out now to get the right one. <laughs>